Hello, and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast. I'm Kimberly Dondo, Digital Content Manager. And in this week's Weekend Essay Podcast, we have reporter Jean-Baptiste Andreu detailing the ups and downs of being a financial advisor in the UK. Take it away, JB. Growing up in France, I've known many fresh graduates professional and early careers, and entrepreneurs who've moved to the UK. It may surprise you, but on the other side of the channel, the UK is often seen as a friendlier place for career starters and people aspiring to start the business. I'm not different from them. I didn't empty my piggy bank to be trained in journalism in the UK just for the sake of it. I knew too well that I wouldn't get the same job opportunities in France. This is especially true since I knew I wanted to specialize in finance, also, international affairs came across second. I was, however, aware that Paris is not a financial hub, or at least it does not compare with London. Arguably, it does not even play in the same league as Zurich and Frankfurt. As a result, the number of financial publications in France is not as extensive as in the UK. I didn't count, but that's easily noticeable when inspecting newsstands in each country. Quite logically, fewer publications meet fewer job openings in financial journalism. My assumptions proved right when I was applying for work experiences, and they were once again confirmed when the time to look for a job came. There is a reason why I write for money marketing and not money marketing. There is another reason why I chose the UK. I've always aspired to spend at least a few years outside of Europe, as London is arguably the city in Europe with the best international connections, I knew the odds of making it happen would be higher than in Paris. While I've been treated fairly well by my host, I recognize that my motivations were purely opportunistic. That's not the case for everyone. People have different motivations for settling in the UK. Irvin Mitchell, financial planner, Jason Manford, moved to the UK four years ago. He had worked as a financial planner for about five years in his native Australia before meeting his wife who happens to be a UK citizen. Personal circumstances led him to settle permanently in the UK. He says, Soon after my son was born, he suffered serious medical problems. We decided to move back to the UK so that we could be closer to my wife's family, who has an extended family living close by ours. In Australia, my family is a bit more spread out and live quite far away. Celtic Financial Planning Limited chartered financial planner Clona Lira first practiced her profession in India. As she studied in the UK, coming back to work in this country was a logical decision. Practicing your profession in another country can be challenging due to different work cultures. Lira says, bearing in mind it was a very long time ago, early 2000s, in a life insurance company, our team felt like a close-knit family. We hung out a lot, drank a lot of chai, sales meetings would start at 7 p.m. and finish at 11 p.m. on a weekly basis. Many clients expected a bit of hounding and hard sales in sales. There was a time to turn up to work, 9 a.m., but you generally left after your boss, often after 7 p.m., which I found very annoying, inefficient and inconvenient, especially as I had evening MBA classes. In some ways, the use of technology in the workplace was way ahead in Mumbai, India, than when I came to the UK, which shocked me. There also seemed to be more women in financial services, at least in the teams I worked in. There can also be differences in how the markets are structured. Mountfort says, the industries are very similar, but I would say that Australia is a few years ahead of the UK in terms of regulation. One of the big differences is that Australia has had compulsory superannuation since 1992, which is the equivalent of auto enrollment. From that point, Australia has had much fewer defined benefit schemes. Networks are also much more common in Australia. They call them dealer groups. Being directly authorized is very rare. I don't know what the statistics are, but I would say only a very small percentage are directly registered with ASIC, which is the equivalent of the Financial Conduct Authority. There are also networks here, but there are still a lot of companies that are directly authorized. There can also be issues around qualifications, 
as diplomas acquired abroad are not always re recognized. Manford adds, none of the qualifications cross over. I was the equivalent of chartered financial planner in Australia. I've worked in the industry for many years. I have a master's of applied finance degree. I just got 30 advanced credits from the CII, but I didn't get any credit at diploma level. In spite of the difficulties, having lived in, the, in different countries can be an advantage when starting anew in another country. Lira says, if you've lived in a country that feels tough to live in, you just build up huge amounts of resilience. I feel very grateful for the life I have now and for the tough life experiences too, which help me feel so strong and resilient. For Manford, coming from Australia helps him appreciate how wider changes might change the market as some of them have already happened in Australia. Considering the exchanges between the UK and Australia, he says that being from Australia can help to create connections with people. There are also upsides in living and working in the UK. Succeeding in a foreign country can be very rewarding. Lyra says, having lived here over 17 years, I don't think of myself as a foreigner. I'm neither fully Indian or British though, having been conditioned by my life, lived experience in two different countries. I am somewhere on the spectrum, I guess. I have a successful and thriving business for which I'm very grateful. Living in the UK has helped push me past my comfort zone in many ways, so the learning, both personally and professionally, has been the most rewarding part. Manford also considers the UK to be his home now. He says he wants to help people that live here and make an impact. Financial planning is a great way to do that. It's a way to be a helpful part of a community, he adds. Of course, living in the UK is not only about work and career. There are also reasons to enjoy life in this country for what it has to offer outside of the office. Lyra mentions banter, punctuality, public transport, cycle lanes, and the opportunity to meet people from all around the world. For Manford, it's a UK geographical location. He says, I'm from Australia, which is a lovely place, but it's very isolated. Also, I'm from Perth in Western Australia, which is even more isolated than Sydney or Brisbane. One of the things that I think is so amazing about the UK is that within a very close radius, you could be at amazing beaches in the Mediterranean, skiing in the Alps, or on the east coast of America. There's so much that is so close. If you've lived your whole life in Western Europe, there are a lot of things you can take for granted. In Australia, I could fly seven hours in one direction and still be in the country. That's something you don't really realize until you've lived somewhere that isolated. As a downtime though, both Lyra and Manford mention the weather, the greyness and the lack of sunshine. Thanks, JB, for another insightful podcast. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as Twitter and LinkedIn. See you next time.